Oblivion might be my favorite game of all time. <laughs> this was a really mind-blowing opening cinematic at the time, for me anyway. Uh, it kind of looks like trash by today's standards, I'll admit, but it really was a step up from Morrowind, and that's what really mattered. And then you see this. <laughs> it's not exactly the most uh, satisfying way to start a game. However, keep in mind that character creation in games up to this point was kind of more like what you find in the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games, where you're selecting from a few preset faces. So when you discover that you can click on face and it gives you, you know, a lot of options for adjustment. That was actually a really big deal. And it kind of was a cool way to start the game, actually. Because, you know, it was just so novel. And, you know, nowadays people know of this just as that thing where you can make the face look ridiculous. But at the time, it didn't look ridiculous to us. It looked regular. <laughs> it looked nice. What a nice man. <laughs> no, se <laughs> no, seriously, we thought this looked good. I promise. For real. Hmm? 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 Too much fun, oh my god. This is great, I forgot how good this was. <laughs> There's something charming about this hairstyle, I'm gonna keep it. I like it. it. Looks good to me. I'm gonna keep this guy just the way he is. This guy's name is... Jartholomew. I am sure I want to be an Imperial. So then, suddenly you're controlling the game and you might think staring at a wall is a bad way to start a game however do you see how shiny that wall is how it looks moist well that's because it is shiny look at that the shine on the rocks changes depending on where you stand it is shiny now you Whippersnappers might not realize it, but that was brand new at the time. That was mind-boggling. So you might think staring at a wall is a bad way to start a game, but in reality, you're staring at brand new technology. Also, interestingly, this wall is completely flat here, but if you view it from an angle, it looks 3D. That's another... Thing that was like brand new like that looks 3d to me it certainly has depth but then if you look at it it's totally flat so I'm just saying it's not just any old wall this is a very special very special wall and for some reason this game likes jump to be on E which makes no sense and then after you're done marveling at the shiny walls you might notice these chains and shackles and if you've seen any of the marketing material for the game you'll see that it has physics simulation so you might touch the chain and be astounded to see that it wiggles around it looks pretty realistic even to this day it's got a little undulation here it's winging around it's got a little subtle wave action it's very very cool and you can grab it with your grab button, throw it around. It's really, really something. And if you're too young, you just don't understand how crazy this was at one point in time. You take this for granted, but it's definitely not. And there's a cup and a jug as well. So finally, again, this, look at the ceiling. I guarantee you that's not 3D modeling of brickwork. That's a trick of the eye. That's the texture. Uh, uh, look at the lantern casting that 
glow on the wall. Look at how that reflects and, gl and shines and casts shadows. It's not even 3D. How did they do that? It's amazing. So after you're done just having your mind blown by the graphics, you can look over and notice that there's a silhouette over there. So you inch oh, toward it. Oh, and in yeah, turn subtitles on here. I in here. Imperial batterment. It's, you know, a lot of games will start out with you being praised or being nicely taught things. But in this game, you get abused and imprisoned. You get bossed around. And then, you my boy you. Patrick Stewart bonks his head Let on the chain face. and talks you to are the one. Then the stuff. Listening to his beautiful voice uh, blasting into my 16-year-old nerd ears at a high volume uh, was, uh, it was an experience, let me tell you. I was enjoying myself. By the grapes of the gobs. And what a mindfuck to have my prison cell open up and turn into an escape route. Crazy. And Valen Dreth over there is, uh, he's, he's all quiet now. He's just watching. He has nothing else to say. So, like, metaphorically, the prison cell opening up into, like, a new world of exploration is kind of like how video gaming itself opened up into a new world of experiences. Uh, when the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion was released. So if you think about it, it's like symbolic. And then suddenly there's a battle. And me and Patrick over here just chilling. Oh, the fact that you could move bodies around also was pretty cool. That was something I think I only had seen in the Hitman games prior to this. And that was part of the game, to like hide, um, hide your murder victims, you know? But now in this game, you can just move them for fun. Just whatever you want. No pressure. Just move a rat around. Ew, it has a little pee-pee. Huh. Has anyone ever done this before? Have you ever jiggled a rat? Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so of course you gotta get Captain Reynolds' sword. Where did it go? In here? Stupid assassin is in the way. There we go. Get Reynolds' katana. Loot these guys. What a bunch of nerds. And then Emperor and his policemen went this way. So I'm gonna go this way. And here's the first treasure chest you see, Aim. And you loot it, and there's like nothing really good in it. But it's good to know that it's there. Now, I've always thought this room was really cool, because there's a rot. Punch the shit out of it. But there's this also that. But also, there's this skeleton. I don't understand what happened here. I don't pretend to know the explanation for these things I'm finding. But there's a sack with garbage in it. There's a skeleton which contains boots and a cuirass somehow and arrows and a dagger and lockpicks and a torch. Although visually not. But then there's a bow you can grab and then the arms on the skeleton fall apart and then the head slides down and then you scrape the body with the arm and you just push it around until you're satisfied just until you think you've had enough and then a little bit more and then you whack the skull with the knife in the arm and look at it go play a little golf skull golf then you grab the skull see you bring it into the light and then you make it laugh <laughs> and then it goes bonk. It rests in the rib cage. A perfect hole in one. But of course, there's a chest here, and it's very easy, as you can see. 
You ever really look up here? I don't think I've ever looked up here. There's just like a crack with roots hanging down. It's kind of weird. It almost looks like you could climb up there and just escape this godforsaken hellhole. I guess that would be maybe on the hillside next to the prison? I wonder if there's anywhere... Oh. Oh. The root is all jiggly. Wiggle it around. Huh. Weird. Anyway, there's this chest here. And it's very easy. And so you pick it. And you just pick it on the first try. It's not hard. And you take the loot. Simple. Now, about that bow. This is really a cool way to introduce a bow in a game. Because... You've got the room to yourself. There's no person yelling at you, telling you how to shoot a bow. You just get pop-ups, which is fine. And then when you shoot the bucket, you know, it's physics and it goes kapow. And the gravity in the game is too low, so everything falls really slow. It's very strange. And you can recover your arrows, which is brand new. Uh, in Morrowind, you could not do that. The arrows in Morrowind fly through the ground into nothingness forever. Where does this hole go? Oh, it's a well, right? Duh. Forgive me. Have you ever noticed this barrel in the corner? I'm not sure I ever have. Look at that! More weapon choices and arrows and lockpicks. Very cool. What about this box over here? You got even more stuff. Teaches the player early on to scour the environment for containers. Take everything you find. Just now when I looked at this wall, I thought of um, climbing it because it looks like in Doom Eternal when you find a broken wall and you can climb it. Yikes. Well, I think that's about it for this room. Oh, except for the goblin shaman who died. It's a lady. The goblin shaman has big old ditties and the physics of a rubber sex doll. This is what I do with mine. Oh yeah. And of course the goblin has some decent loot, honestly. Like, this is pretty valuable stuff for a brand new character to have. And had a key for the door. So the player now knows about lockpicks and keys. Door opened with iron key, there you go. Now the game wants you to cast a spell. In case you thought all you could do was bonk stuff, you're wrong. You can also cast fireballs out of your goddamn bare hand. This chest has iron armor. I always thought that the iron armor looks really cool in this game. And sometimes I would just keep using it, even after finding better stuff, because I think this one looks the best. It's just classy. So then we go down the hallway. And this rat is scurrying away, which is unusual behavior. And then, oh my god, it's a zombie! And then there's a little rat versus zombie battle. Oh no, he's attacking me now! This guy has half a brain, only one arm. It's no good. You got to kill him. And then the rats, are they even hostile? No, they're programmed to run away from stuff. Look at that. Very cool. <laughs> What a weird thing. I think you're supposed to kill them. I'm gonna let them live. They didn't do anything. The zombie has bone and skull and mort flesh. Now what's up there? Have you ever looked up there? What if I cheat a little bit? Oh my. Uh-oh. Shloop. <coughs> well, that's interesting. I've never noticed this before. Nice of the developers to give us something to look at up above. They didn't need to do that, but cool. I always loot this chest over here. I was always really good at this lock picking mini game to the point where my friends would have me come over and lock pick for them. It just makes sense to me. I don't know. I don't like it though because I never pick um, security as a skill because I can pick the hardest locks with no skill. So I don't need my character to be good at it, which sucks for immersion's sake. 
I always thought this was a curious little pile of stuff here. There's like five skulls, six skulls, and a bunch of food, and a helmet, and a shield. And then up above, I've never really looked up, I don't think. Is this like a, a pit? Or do those grates open up? They drop people down? Or something? Is this like a kill chamber? It's very weird. And what's that hanging down? Is that like guts? Is that people's entrails? Is this the fucking murder room? This is kind of getting spooky. I think I need to get out of here. So this whole intro takes place in this dark, dank dungeon. The Triple D. And, um, that is not an accident. I'm quite sure that was intentional. The very early first-person perspective RPGs on computers were similar to this, only obviously not with modern game engines, but it would be, you know, a corridor about this size and you would just travel through it and encounter monsters and that was about it. Also, do you ever notice there's gold on the shelf here? On the ledge here? You ever notice there's gold here? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Anyway, the developers obviously were uh, nodding to that history by making this the intro of this more modern game. And they're sort of subverting it because they've got all these modern game mechanics in this old-timey setting. A retro setting. It really, really resembles, like, um, Eye of the Beholder. More holes in the ground. Interesting. It's nice that there's a reason for light being down here, though. It's good. Gotta always check this barrel and get some ale. Although I gotta say the ale, it, it has like no real purpose. It's kind of lame. They should have made this more useful. And I guess they addressed that in Skyrim. The, the drinks actually do something in Skyrim. This basically does nothing. But you can sell it. You can drink it for role-playing purposes. Fine. Now we're in more of a natural cave here. We transitioned out of the dungeons out of the secret passage and into what appears to be a natural cavern. At least it's supposed to look like one. And every time you see a chest, you have to open it. So we do. So we grab the stuff out of it and then we look down and ooh, a shiny gemstone. Beautiful piece. Shiny rock. Mm. Oh yeah, look at that baby sparkle. Yoink. Silver goblet. So there's two skulls here, one almost intact skeleton, and then two extra femurs. So that's like 1.2 people or so, I'd say. 1.1? Yeah. I wonder what happened there. That's very strange. And are, is it is it on a pile of hay? Is there a pile of hay down here in this cave? That's kind of weird. I wonder what they were thinking when they put this here. Now, of course, you gotta collect mushrooms, or fail to collect mushrooms. Interesting. I don't know how you can find nothing of use when it shows the mushroom right there. One of the mods I used to use... Ooh, there's a piece of cheese down here. Yoink. One of the mods I used to use was to make the harvest chance 100%, because it just kills me to see the plant and then to be told I couldn't find anything of use, you know? Spooky swinging skull strings. Super scary spooky swinging skull strings suspended. Now there's stink horn in here. Is that not an oblivion ingredient? Isn't that like only found in oblivion? Or am I thinking of something else? I could have sworn it was stink horn. Now, if you're observant, you might notice that we encountered a goblin a while back and we've been finding human skeletons and now there's skulls on strings and there's a fire that's burning so something lives down here and we're about to find out what do you ever notice that there's these little chains on the edge it's like a little hinge cute 
I don't know who built that door. It's kind of weird to have a door in a natural cave. I love the fact that you can open a chest or a container. I love the fact that you can open a container and there's just garbage in it. That's such a unique thing in these games and it's really addictive because you know, every time you open a container, you know there's a chance that it might have something good and a chance it might have something bad. So it creates that uh, suspense that you need. And then you just bonk the shit out of a goblin. Heal. There's something very satisfying about healing yourself in this game. I don't know what it is. Now, this scene to me is very memorable. You've got the mortar and pestle and the bottle of poison, yoink, and the ingredients to make more poison. You can make a freaking potion, dude. And I love this rat on the rotisserie here. Roasted rat. Delicious. Let's triple the meat. Now this is an interesting little thing they did here. Because they made it so the goblin runs at you and triggers the trap. I feel like that was not the intended behavior. The goblin should stay put and make us trigger the trap. But, alas, that's not what we got, so we bonk him. If you run up to the goblin and stand right here, if you run up to the goblin and trigger the trap, these things will actually bonk the goblin to death, so maybe that's what they intended. I don't know. But I'm taking it slow, so things aren't playing out exactly the way Todd thought. Got a nice little rib cage here. Bonk. How do you think they uh, installed those things? logs with spikes attached to chains embedded in the ceiling. How do you think they uh, did that? I don't see any ladders around here. It's a cave, so there's no way to get above the ceiling. It's just the ground. It's just peculiar. I wonder who did that, how they did it, and when they did it. You would think it's the goblins, because there's only goblins down here, and they would have probably not had a tripwire set up if they were just dummies. I don't know. There's questions to be answered, I would say. Now, I like this part, because the game's not entirely linear. You want to go straight, where the big bright fire is, but then what if you go over here? <gasps> Rewarded for exploring? There's a chest over here. And a trash basket and a gold a dagger. Now this is a classic, obviously. You push the logs, you smash the goblins. That was extremely, extremely novel at the time because these are actually physics-enabled objects, not simple scripted animations. Very cool. And this part where it opens up a little bit was always intense because if you're not careful, you can aggro like four different goblins and you might struggle with that if you're not good. You haven't get good yet. It's no problem for a crow though. Bonk them. That's all you gotta do. The secret to being good at this game. And of course, those are, there's these little rats down here, and you can set them free. Um, I thought they were gonna go attack the goblins if I set them free, but maybe I'm not remembering this correctly. Weird. Oh well. Bonk. Yeah. Two-handed blunt weapon is sick. <laughs> what was that? Oh no! There's a magic goblin. But you just bonk her. He did. And then you get this unique, really cool staff. I always thought this was really cool. It's like goblin's head on a stick. Hell yeah. Zap shit with it. But did you ever come over here? Because there's stuff over here. More useless ale. But then there's also this chest. It's got an iron longsword in it. And a repair hammer. So this room is kind of like the first boss fight of the game. Defeat all the enemies and then you get all the treasure. Very wholesome. Now, that's a lot of skulls. I wonder, did the Imperials have some kind of a deal with the goblins? Because they seem to be providing them a lot of raw materials down here. And there was a zombie back there. Are they necromancers? Uh, necromancer goblins? Shirt here. Bone? Bones. Bone? bones. So having defeated the goblin menace, we now get to ascend out of the darkness. Uphill, up, 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 into the light. 
I guess these structures here kind of imply that this is what they were mining for. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just supports because they knew they were building on top of it. I don't think that's good long term though because these wooden supports will uh, rot away. Huh. That's kind of a weird joint there, isn't it? Very weird. Hmm. Okay. Continuing on. What a relief it was for the first time to come out of this goblin hellhole through the butthole of glory and back into civilization and hearing these friendly or not so friendly voices again but oh no there's more dudes that's some dialogue i never really hear because i'm usually rushing to get down there hmm what happens if i unlock this door absolutely nothing okay so a little emperor guy doesn't want to go. He wants to wait for me. They've not sent. I always thought this was a cool way to do the birth sign selection. I, I have spent so many hours building characters in this game. I love the artwork that comes with each of these signs um, and the descriptions. It just it it fires the imagination you know it's just pure fantasy and it's great oh what should we pick here i always thought um the lord pretty good choice at least in the early game but i mean who really cares about the birth sign you know you know in games you don't always have to pick the optimal build you can play a shitty character and still really love the game in fact sometimes you love it more so don't worry too much about it you don't have to pick the lady every time okay in this game time stands still while you're having a conversation with someone in skyrim time does not stand still everything is still moving all around you i think that is a mistake and it is much better to do what this game does and have time stand still because it allows the player to get engrossed in the dialogue without any distractions or anxieties um in skyrim when you're talking to people there's like stuff happening all around you and there could be enemies attacking you and janky dialogue playing over the dialogue you're trying to listen to it's no good anyway point is oblivion did it right my only real critique with the dialogue in this game is you can't revisit it there are lots of moments in the game where you hear a piece of dialogue that you can never hear again and you may as well um, make yourself i find that kind of unfortunate like maybe i like it and i want to hear it again you know there should be like a little replay mode this guy, this actor, always has the wrong inflection. Always a disjointed delivery. And I don't think it's his fault. I think he didn't get any guidance. He just sounds strange. But what's back here? Nothing. A locked door, I'm sure. Yep. But what if I unlock it? Oh my god, you can actually go through the door. <gasps> It's the door from before! Holy shit. Does that mean you could unlock it and skip that whole tutorial? That's crazy, I didn't know that. Huh. Well, while we're here, can I go back and talk to Valen Dreth? While I'm cheating and unlocking things? Oh! <gasps> the wall repaired itself! Oh my god. What if I click on the wall and activate it? Nothing. Okay, that's fine. But what if I disable it? Aha! A hole in the ground. Well, wait a minute. I just had an idea. Great. <laughs> He's so friendly. Hey, Valendreth. Uh, heard any rumors? Oh. Okay. I love their little stinky face. Oh my god. That's mm. funny. Mm hmm There. I am now maxed out as far as the minigame is concerned with Valen Dreth. Thank God. So, I was curious, can I escape the prison? It's totally screwing up my uh, plan for the video, but... Oh yeah, they've got like a little torture station over here. Oh my God, they've got a torture suit up there. That's like, you have to sit on the metal 
It goes up your butt or something? That's, that's horrible. The Imperials are bad people. Let's see what happens if we go up here. Wooden door. Okay. I had a feeling it wasn't going to let me actually go to the city. Because this is like the tutorial zone. Not the actual prison. Anyway, let's get back to what we were doing. We gotta follow the boys. And these guys always have potions. So if you like potions, you should loot those guys. Oh, there's an extra assassin that they missed. I'll take care of it. There we go. And got a little training in. And I got a compliment from Glenroy. Thank you, sir. You know, it wouldn't be a nice game without bugs. You know what I mean? What if it was perfect? Would you really want that? I don't know. I always found the bugs really charming. Now people widely recognize how funny they are. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to have an imperfect video game, you know? It's just part of the game. It's whatever. It's, it's a perfectly competent experience, even with the bugs. I don't think there's really too many game-breaking problems. I'm happy to have them. The Emperor should not be leading the way. Yep. Oh my god. This is what I mean about time standing still. We can have this little Shakespearean exchange, even while I'm being attacked by multiple enemies. And then they just drop dead. <laughs> well, the Emperor gave it to me. I must take it to Joffrey. There is another heir. The sewers? Am I right? I fucking love this class selection with all the pictures. They're so cool. They're like not the best drawings in the world. The people look kind of fucked up. But they have like this vibe, you know? They vibe hard. Super hard. I'm vibing. I can't tell you anything else. I just know I'm vibing. I always thought the scout was cool. Like, this is a class I've picked a lot because it just seems like, I mean, I mean, look at him. He's wearing cool leather armor. He's got a shield hanging off his ass, squatting down, picking up flowers. Just seems like a cool way to live. You know? Same thing with the rogue. Like, goddamn, that motherfucker is cool as shit. He's counting his money, vibing, sitting on a table, got a little shield on his hip. It's good shit. The pilgrim, though, looks like a fucking dweeb. <laughs> He's like, mm, let me check my brochure. The Nightblade. Just looks like a, you know, kind of a creepy guy. I don't think I want to hang out with him. The monk is faceless and strange with big ass feet. It's like a Catholic monk, but combat oriented. It's pretty weird. I always thought the mage looked weird because his beard is not on the side of his face. It's just the mustache and the chin. It's just the goatee area, but really, really long quite unique. And I like how he's holding a little mm, fire thing. It looks pretty fucking cool. I love the idea of the sorcerer, and I've used this class before. Just wearing heavy armor but only using magic. I think that's, that's a cool idea. Just be a tank. Just be a fucking tank, but spell casting all over. And I love that picture where he's holding like a smoking potion, I guess. It's really neat. Spell sword is just like, pakow. The thief is kind of like giving me scout vibes, but with like shitty 90s hair and a little stinky face. And then the warrior is just the spell sword, but with a helmet on. It's like the same exact picture almost. Same face. I like the witch hunter. That I don't remember exactly what that reminds me of. Is it like an old Disney movie or something? Somebody was dressed up like this. Those little cloth shoes are so stupid. <laughs> but you know what? It's a noble profession. Somebody's got to hunt them. The knight looks kind of greasy, I'm going to say. But other than that, the, the suit and the sword are pretty sick. 
He does seem to be missing a glove, however. The healer? Something about that face. I always just pictured this as a woman, but I'm pretty sure these are all supposed to be men. But I also love the idea of the healer class. I've picked it before as well. Like, it's... It, my, my mental, my head canon with the healer is that you... Um, you know, you don't kill for your, uh, for your living. You heal and you make potions and then speechcraft and, uh, mercantile are, are some of the skills and alchemy. So I, I imagine you make healing potions and you sell them and that's, you know, that's how you make your living as a healer. I really like it. The crusader just looks like he's getting bewildered by something. Like, he's on the back foot, and he's blinded, like he got flashbanged or something. It doesn't really inspire me to pick this class, and that's a shame. They should have thought more about that, I think. They, it doesn't really look aspirational, it looks pathetic. The battle mage is cool, but I always thought his crotch looks a little bit exposed. I suppose he's wearing pants, but I never really see it that way. It kind of looks like he's got bare thighs. So I can't help but feel like he's um, inappropriately dressed. The bard looks like a total goof. That beard is ridiculous. His nose is huge. His hair is stunning. And his little stance is just something else. And oh, what's that between his legs? Bacow. The barbarian just looks like a nerd to me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that giant meaty thigh. He doesn't look like he's that buff. I guess it's the stance he's taking, really. Like, he's turned sideways, so you can't see his big shoulders. You just see his big ass, his thick legs. The assassin does not look like somebody I would want to be friends with, but he's, you know, he's doing something intense. He's about to kill somebody. And what is he, like, perched up on a tree branch or something? It's kind of cool. He's got a big dent in the top of his head. <laughs> his ear is... His ear is way too high and too far forward. He's all fucked up. Archer is cool. I've picked this one a lot. Um, it's just that portrait. He just looks like he means serious business. Although, I feel like he's going to rip up his fingers if he lets his arrow go between his fingers like that. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, archers. Agent looks weird, but... Wait a minute. Oh, rogue. Yeah. The agent looks kind of weird, too. Kind of a sneaky guy. And I don't know what his hand is doing. <laughs> but you know what? It's none of my business, I guess. If he wants to let his little hand flop around, that's his business. And what's that on his hip? Is that a ball sack? I like his little uh, sleeveless hoodie, though. That's cool. Now, the acrobat, of course, is the most fucked up looking of them all. Um, what is that hair? Seriously. I don't get it. And this is a class that has no armor skills. It's interesting. You have block, but no corresponding armor skill, so... What are you supposed to be using to block? Are you supposed to just block with your bow or, and your blade? But the guy in the picture has a shield. I don't know. I also love the fact that he's like perched on a windowsill. It's very, very evocative. It's a nice looking moon out there too. Very cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, let's see. There doesn't appear to be a class that uses heavy armor and only blunt. Blunt does not get enough love. Well, I'll just go with knight. He just takes the sword. I didn't ask to give him the sword. Glenroy, you poor man, look at you. All right, and then of course the tutorial is over and you hurriedly exit this dungeon. And there's some uh, enemies down here to fight. In this little extra room, there's goblins. And like, there's nothing else over here. Oh, except a chest. Look at that. Cheese flower. And then you go over here and we're almost out. 
And at the exit, there's two holes overhead that don't have light streaming through them. I guess that one doesn't either. That's just kind of interesting. I wonder if that was a mistake. So anyway, as we go toward the light here, it's like literally the light at the end of the tunnel. It's kind of a neat touch. And the game gives us one more chance to make any changes we want to our character. And this is always a big decision because it's the final time. But I'm satisfied. And I took so long to do the tutorial that it's nighttime now. But no normally it's daytime. And I can't rest because enemies are nearby. But, you know, if you've played this game, you know that the moment you step out of the sewer and you see this giant environment, it's like insane. Because before this, you were trapped in a little cavern, in a little corridor, and now you can just go wherever you want. And you go, what the? And it's amazing. Anyway, this game, you know, it's really a special video game. It really is. Okay? I don't really know how else to describe it. It's just a very special game. It's a world. It's an experience. Well, if you made it this far into the video, you must have really enjoyed it. Um, if you did, I would humbly ask that you consider checking out some other videos on my channel to see if my channel is a good fit for you. I don't want you to subscribe unless you're actually going to watch every video that I upload. That's the whole point of subscribers. So, if you just only like this one and you don't like anything else I've made, probably don't subscribe, but check back in a while and see if I'm making more stuff like this. We'll see. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Shruggy, my original patron on Patreon, uh, number one super fan extraordinaire. Um, I really appreciate the support, and uh, you're cool. You're cool. <laughs>